The college school year that just ended was packed with seemingly endless controversies involving everything from banning the movie American Sniper to questioning Columbia University's Mattress Girl to using Title IX, a federal law designed to end gender discrimination, to investigate feminist professor Laura Kipnis at Northwestern. Robbie Suave is a staff editor who covers higher education and free speech issues at Reason.com. We sat down to talk with him about three of the most disturbing campus stories of the year and why there's reason to believe that the high tide of political correctness is actually receding. Let's start uh, first with the case of Emma Solkowitz at Columbia. Uh, she's better known as Mattress Girl. What was going on there and how is the case shaken out? Yeah, this is a case that's really brought a lot of uh, renewed attention to this issue of sexual assault on campuses. In Emma Solkowitz's case, uh, she, so she accused her, uh, a friend of hers, and they'd become lovers, uh, Paul Nungesser, of assaulting her uh, while they were having intercourse right. uh, early on her sophomore year of college. And then months later, she made the accusations when she says uh, that other friends of hers said they had also been assaulted by him. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, this is a very disputed incident. The only two people in the room were them. He says she made the whole thing up. And ultimately, the campus judiciary process did side with him and, and said that, you know, he didn't do it. Um, and the police, you know, didn't go much further than looking into it and saying, like, there's not enough here to support right. the charge that he did do it. And then she, as an art project, she started carrying a mattress around with her around campus called uh, Carry That Weight. Right. Um, and that obviously drew a lot of attention. Um, what, what happened now? Because Nungesser graduated, right? right. And, as did she right. this year. She both graduated, they, they both graduated, and she did bring her mattress with her right. across the stage. And interestingly, the president of Columbia, uh, Lee Bollinger, didn't uh, shake her hand as she mm -hmm. crossed, I, I think, because she'd caused so much trouble for them, including right. being one of the students who filed a Title IX complaint against the university. This right. is the, the law that, um, you know, forbids sexual discrimination and harassment on campus. In this case, I mean, you have a sexual assault or, you know, a, a claimed right. sexual assault, and it ends up leading to two Title IX right. cases, one by the woman involved, one by the man. Right. And what is the status of uh, Nungesser's case then against Columbia? Yeah, so it's just pending at, mm -hmm. at this point. It was filed a couple weeks ago. It argues that he, uh, that the university, uh, failed to protect him from the campaign of harassment that she mm -hmm. waged against him by, you know, publicly identifying him by by making this statement mm -hmm. aimed at getting him kicked off campus. And he was saying that, you know, I'm innocent of this. I was right. found innocent of this. And uh, they had and they sponsored her project as well because she received course credit for it. It was an art project on campus. Uh, is there a timeline for when this might play out legally? It's it's hard to tell, and it's hard to tell, frankly, whether uh, whether it is merited, because uh, mm -hmm. you could make the argument that she was engaging in Free expression, uh, right, right speech yeah. and advocacy. Um, all, although the fact that she received course credit for it right. complicates it a little bit, and th the lawsuit uh, doesn't actually. You know, he's not suing her. Right. It's a complaint. Um, another uh, recent story was uh, a, at a couple of colleges, including your alma mater, University of Michigan, had uh, they were going to show American Sniper um, at Michigan, a, a Muslim student group protested. The university pulled the viewing, then put it back on. What does this tell us about the current state of? free expression, or and I'm not even sure if it's free expression, but of just kind of open discussion on college campuses. Right. I think it's uh, frightening a little bit to see the definition of what's, uh, you know, what's threatening, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lowered to such an extent because the students were saying literally showing this movie would make us feel unsafe on campus, that this is a genocidal, propag you know, anti-Muslim propaganda film, uh, which I don't know that that's the case. But yeah. in a sense, I'm like, even if it was, couldn't, wouldn't we be, isn't a university a good place to, to study it and, you know, maybe denounce it if it's terrible or, you know, talk about but these important things. to argue thing. right, or, to, or, yeah, teach the conflicts. Right, used no, to be exactly. The slogan. Yeah. yeah. How did the students, the Muslim students, get it banned, and then what happened that it went, you know, the university was like, no, we're going to show it anyway? Right. They, they did a petition and mm -hmm. generated a lot, of, uh, a lot of media buzz, and that, you know, that got it. It, it, was, a, it was a recreational campus 
affiliate uh, group affiliated with right. the university that was going to show it. They got them to reverse that decision, and then there was some counter uh, mm -hmm. blowback to that. People going like, "Are you out of your mind?" Right. And the not, football and coach at Michigan, uh, Harbaugh, yeah. was very supportive of actually showing it. Right. Yeah. If you're being led by your football coach in the arena of free speech, um, <laughs> right. you know, something has gone wrong. Right. So they did show. Uh, they showed Paddington as well. Was the alternative right. film, which yeah. is a little ironic. Uh, you know, yeah. it's a, kind of based on a children's yeah. sort of thing. That um, a final case uh, to talk about is the uh, the strange case of Laura Kipnis. She's yes. a, a professor at Northwestern University um, who became the subject or the target of a Title IX complaint at Northwestern. What did she do that raised the ire of uh, students there? This is really an astonishing case because all she did was write a, an op-ed in the Chronicle of Higher Education that was about Title IX in general and she's a, she's a liberal, a, a radical sort of uh, you know old 60s style person who was actually writing about you know being more sexually open and, and permissive right. and, uh, and this the students uh, supposedly liberal students didn't like it. They complained about the op-ed. They thought it was factually wrong. They protested and they also filed a Title IX complaint against her. And then what happened with that? Because uh, if a Title IX complaint is, is lodged against somebody, then the university yeah. investigates it and Northwestern found what? Yeah, they, after hiring an outside law firm, you know, that talked to her with her support person, not her lawyer, but her person she's allowed to bring, who was replaced midway through the process because he also, he had issues, so he generated Title IX complaints against him, so it's really astonishing to see them kind of just uh, take off, but she was cleared. Um, so and, and what was she uh, technically accused of? I mean, of creating an unsafe... It was a, uh, a hostile place. She was retaliating. Uh, there were a couple issues, but it was that she was retaliating against uh, against the person uh, who was named in the Title IX complaint that she was discussing. Mm -hmm. It was retaliating against them, and that's right. not allowed under Title IX. And that it was creating a chilling effect for people to uh, file Title IX complaints right. that she was complaining about Title IX And of course then the, the flip of that is that this creates a chilling effect on the speech of everybody on right, campus if everything you say is subject to a, a, to a complaint that is then going to go through some kind of adjudication process. Right, some time of adjudication process. And think of the, I, I keep thinking of the expense, <laughs> how this must drive up the cost of college mm -hmm. Uh, tuition that they have to respond to every single instance of right. someone stepping a toe out of line. Now, the, one of the things that was interesting about Kipnis is that this is not the kind of stocking, you know, the, the kind of political correctness argument from maybe 10 or 15 years ago because you have a liberal professor, a left-wing feminist professor who's being attacked. She was talking, you know, among other things in the Chronicle of Higher Education piece, she was talking about how uh, students should be more sexually liberated and right. she remembered fondly uh, instances where she engaged in sex with her professors back in the day. Um, so this was a different type of case and it got a very, she was highly defended by all sorts of people that normally kind of glom, you know, kind of pile on the professor in this case. Why, you know, what happened there and what, what role did that play? Yeah, well, some people, you know, cynically said that it was, well, liberals are now willing to defend uh, because it's a liberal professor right. who, who's the victim. I think that's a little too cynical. I, I think you are seeing a cross, mm -hmm. across the board kind of uh, concern from commentators, from pundits, from other journalism outlets that there really is something wrong with the climate. Uh, on campus when people, for exp really just all they're doing is expressing opinions. There was no instance, you know, Laura Kipnis didn't, there was no physical dispute right. with anyone. She really just talked about what she thought. And uh, I think that's starting to create a movement that wants to do something about it. Unfortunately, because of the Title IX regime, because of how the education department has interpreted this law, there's really not much uh, we can do, I think, until until that law is kind of engaged. Be beyond the kind of Kipnis incident, there's also uh, Jonathan Shade of the New York, of New right. York Magazine recently wrote, a, a, you know, a, a basic liberal uh, commentator, uh, you know, talked about PC going too far. There are other instances of this. Are we entering a phase where, you know, the idea of kind of um, Enforcing or orthodoxy through the suppression of speech seems to be, um, you know, being called into question more than it has been. Yeah, I definitely think you see you see that, and you can uh, the the number of, of pieces like Jonathan Chait's uh, mm -hmm. making that argument. On the other on the other hand, there are still uh, you know a lot of people who are concerned that you know campuses should be more uh, accommodating and you know emotionally accommodating. Right. You know, it, we really need to 
you know, treat kids like children. Uh, and so you do see those arguments being made. But I think the, the stronger argument that, that colleges are places where you should, you know, really, really be troubled, you should be provoked, you should be angry, you should engage, you know, a, a range of, of views, and that's kind of a, a, you know, a classically liberal sort of mindset. And I, I think that argument is being made by a, a lot more people with, uh, in reaction to kind of these crazy, uh, story after story. All right, well, we'll leave it there. Robbie Suave of Reason, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Uh, for Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.